Mrs. Fletcher. But Stan had to stole the idea for Hatterville from me. He knows it and I know it. That was back when he was your assistant. Yes. And 25% for yourself, young man. Thank you, Mr. Whiting. So it's his word against mine. Well, I can't wait until next week. I need it this morning. Mr. Bozell, I'd like you to meet No, Whiting. Come on, no more snoring. I understand your situation. Believe me, this afternoon, I promise. All right. You promise. Forgive the interruption, Mrs. Fletcher. The failed journalist. The man couldn't even make it in a supermarket tabloid. Yes, Mr. Whiting, you said that you'd been meaning to get in touch with me. Why? Look, you're here because you obviously think that I might be responsible for Hatter's troubles. Well, you seem to have a real motive. Are you? You have to understand. Stan Hatter is a sick, desperate man. He's a pathological liar. This whole scenario... It, it, it's a grandstand play to gain sympathy. He's the victim. At the same time, on a truly Machiavellian level... The hype will boost his readership. The sales of all those stuffed animals, the viewership of the TV cartoon series. I never said he wasn't brilliant. You know, up until a moment ago, you had me half believing that Stan Hatter might be responsible for all this. You're losing it. Look, whatever Stan Hatter's problems are, he regards his characters as his friends. I can't believe that he would be capable of letting his little cartoon creatures say or do anything that was unethical. That's a very shaky premise. Is it? I mean, my characters in my novels are very real to me. I mean, would you allow your, what's his name, uh, Biff Banyan, to say or do anything like that? Well, no. We're talking apples and oranges here. You and I live in the real world. Uh, Mr. Whiting, you're a uh credit card wasn't accepted. Ah, yeah. thank you. Excuse me, Dave. Oh. Mrs. Fletcher, this is Mel Lazarus. What a pleasure, Mr. Lazarus. How do you do, Mrs. Fletcher? Have you heard the news about Ben Watanabe? No. answered my question. Don't you find it a little strange that Mr. Watanabe was in your studio at 3.49 in the morning? Sergeant, I have told you before, he always worked at night. For me. And for a lot of other cartoons. Buckman, do you mind? I I'm sorry. Put the bottoms of your shoes. I want every fragment out of that wristwatch crystal. 